Sawgrass Cadillac. Make sure your next Cadillac is backed by Morse at Ed Morse Sawgrass Cadillac. Proud partner of the Miami Dolphins by JM Lexus. At JM Lexus, you'll always get the home team advantage. And by Williamson Automotive. Williamson is Miami. I can't believe it happened two weeks in a row. The Dolphins foiled by a last second field goal. This one hurt even more because it felt like the Dolphins today were the better team on the field. Tyler Bass, in case you're keeping track, is Buffalo's kicker who can't make an extra point earlier in the game. No worries. 61 yards. In Buffalo, with wind, no problem. Splits the uprights with room to spare. Dolphins get it done to them again. As I was watching the game towards the end, I said to myself, the Dolphins, they have a new identity. They're a running team. Only problem with that today, the Buffalo Bills have an old identity. The same identity they've had since 2016, and that's, We own the Miami Dolphins. And that's exactly what they did today. Got outplayed at home and still won the game because they're the Buffalo Bills and we are the Miami Dolphins. I'm Dan Day, by the way. Thanks for joining me. Robert Grieper along with me. You kind of felt as though it was going to come down to the last play or two of the game. And Buffalo really wasn't very impressive here and there. They got bailed out by a penalty. Jordan Poyer, thanks for helping out your old team and not your new team. Unsportsmanlike conduct, leading with his helmet on a pass that I thought Cam Smith had defended pretty well. They get a couple of more yards here, there, everywhere. Have to settle on a 61-yard field goal. Oh, yeah, Mike McDaniel, you had an extra timeout. How about ice the kicker? Ice the kicker. What does it hurt? 61 yards. Make Tyler Bass think about it. He's from Yale. He's smarter than we are. Griefer, why why would you just what is what is he going to do with that timeout now in his pocket as he goes back to the locker room after the Dolphins just lost? And I can give you the score of the game. It doesn't matter. The Bills won 30-27. What's he doing with that timeout in his pocket right now? Maybe it makes it feel good that it's in his pocket right now because obviously it doesn't make the Dolphin fans feel good because you go into that game number 1 you had the mistake of Mostert making that fumble in the third quarter which Obviously, I think was the turning point of the game right there. Then you have Poyer making a dumb headshot right at the end of the game, which makes no sense as well. You have uh, Chop Robinson making a horrible uh, false start penalty at that time of the game. Could you imagine if it was third and 14 instead of third and nine at that time? Yes, that would have made a big difference. It was third and 14. Buffalo could not move the ball. Didn't seem like they really had any idea. Looked like they were kind of, as they say, nobody circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Kind of circling the wagons, looking for a little bit of overtime. Chop Robinson got a sack on the play before. Then he goes off sides on the next play. You can't fault the hustle, but you can fault the mistake. It's third and nine instead of third and 14. And I think any all pro and maybe even MVP category quarterback will tell you third and nine is a whole lot different than third and 14. I did not want to be upset today. I actually liked the way the Dolphins played. I thought the Dolphins outplayed the Bills. But oh yeah, Buffalo woke up and said, oh yeah, we're the Buffalo Bills. We'll figure it out. Like I said, the Dolphins have a new identity. They're a running team. We didn't see Jalen Waddell. We forgot he was even on the team until the very last two minutes of the game. Came up with a touchdown pass. Didn't even do the Waddle because he knew better. Tyreek Hill made some plays here and there, but this is a running team. Not a bad thing to be in this NFL. The only problem is Buffalo has that old, that old identity of we own the Miami Dolphins. Oh, yeah. And we own the AFC East. And now the Dolphins you played a really good game, but you got a whole lot of nothing. What's the option? By the way, November 5th isn't just election day. It's the trade deadline. And you could say, well, look, we're trending in the right direction. Are we? Are we trending in the right direction, finding ways to get beat? And I won't say they lost this game. They didn't help themselves. And Buffalo sure didn't help themselves very much either. 61-yard field goal and conditions with, it's Buffalo. It's a little cool. It's a little windy. Not terrible. Oh, I want to hear from you. 305-567-0560. Call in now. We're going to get you on the phone. It's a therapy session. It's a get it out of your system session. It's maybe congratulate the team for playing their 
oh, is this our best game of the year this year, today? Unfortunately, the Dolphins are ruined their best game of the year so far this year because the Buffalo Bills are the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins are the Miami Dolphins. And for years, I've worked with multiple sports teams, especially in football, whether it's the New Orleans Saints, whether it's the Miami Dolphins, whether it is the whatever Oakland Raiders at the time, whether it's been the LSU Tigers and guys always say this. And you used to see teams that are not very good, like the Dolphins so far this year, playing really good teams. You're like, how did they outplay you and still lose? And they tell me this over and over and over again. Many a football player says, good teams find ways to win. Bad teams find ways to lose. And not even that, but the Dolphins have dug themselves such a deep hole already this season. You have no room for mistakes at this point. Well, you've been you've been beat by Buffalo twice now. So that no tiebreaker. That's like a three-game lead on you. Even if you do go and win out, it's still almost impossible to catch Buffalo now. Well, not even that, but playoffs. How are you going to even make the playoffs at this point? I mean, you would have to pretty much run the table from this point forward to make it into the playoffs to get probably beat in the wild card game. But still. The way you're at right now, you have no room for any mistakes right now. And I mean, a, as you mentioned earlier, Creeper, it might be too late. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it might be too late to even no room for mistakes. You maybe have run out of everything. But here's the thing, as you mentioned earlier, is that the Dolphins team has become a running team. They are running. As you team. saw, A Chan, Mostert, extremely productive, the two of them. Stop it. Stop the presses right now. We kind of said it last week, Creeper. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. Tua Tungavaloa, Zach Sealer, Calais Campbell, Odell Beckham Jr., Jonu Smith. They are not the best player on this team. The best player on this Dolphins team is your second-year running back out of Texas a and one Devon Achan. He has been a monster. He is your best player. He is the guy now. When it gets down to crunch time, we need to get him the ball. Kind of shied away from him in the end. Luckily, Waddle caught the touchdown pass. 305-567-0560. Go into the phone lines right away. 560 WQAM. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Bob, no, it's Miami. Bob, bring it. What you got? Listen, uh, the coaching decisions, what are you doing? You said it already. You, you, five seconds left, and you want to do what with that timeout? He tried to almost call the timeout on the third down, but decided to save it, hopefully for the field goal, and doesn't use it on the field goal. What's Mike McDaniel thinking? I want to hear what he what, – what in the world is he thinking? Not only this, you got twice, and that thing you just made, they already, the other touchdown was caused by a third down penalty, gave them five yards, and automatically kept the drive alive and gave it. I mean, little mistake. This is coaching problem when you make a mistake. Don Shula coach teams did not make these little mistakes. They were the least penalized team in the NFL. We're leading the NFL right now with seven freaking fumbles. That's a team that is loose goose coaching. Bob, That's you- ridiculous. You got a point. Him. You got me going. And when you see a team making these mental errors, making these mental mistakes, making these little mistakes like Chop Robinson going off sides, another on a third down with, uh, I mean, the egregious Jordan Poyer, unsportsmanlike conduct, that's a lack of discipline from your coaching staff. And oh, yeah, what's Mike McDaniel known for? Being buddy, buddy, and how your feelings, and this, and this, and this. Maybe we need somebody to, I'm just going to say, crack the whip a little bit more. It's it, I'm frustrated, just like you, Bob. Yeah, the season is over. Are you are you done We're now? I mean, are are, are uh, we yeah. done? Is there a chance? Do you see any way that this team you, is going to find a way? Listen, you got to win the rest of them to even finish ten and seven. And, and mean, Buffalo's Buffalo's got the double tiebreaker over you. They won both games against we, you. We look at the teams. How many teams are ahead of us right now? Yeah, we everybody. Have to hope for everybody to lose and for us to come around. First of all, the biggest mistake and. Let's not mistake that this team was built by Chris Dreyer. He has to be held responsible. He hired this coach. He didn't change the offensive line. He got his old players, and he gave a $200 million contract to the guy who was one hit from concussion. Did you feel as though there was any chance at Buffalo when they got the ball with whatever, a minute 38 left, that they weren't going to yes, find some way to score? I knew they were going to make it because they're Buffalo. They didn't do a great job of it. They didn't go right down the field and kick a field goal. They kind of fumbled and bumbled and mumbled and backed their way into a 61-yard field goal. But the, ref, the referees really gave them a lot of questionable calls. In my, the other way, I saw a lot of holding on them. There was a lot of holding, call. yeah. I did see that. They called. Nothing. But as soon as we touched them, they would call it on us, or I mean, to be if you play that Poyer, 
over and over. He did not lead with his head. He led with the shoulder, but his helmet touched him. And I think that was over. Yeah, but in live action, it probably looked a little lot worse. I, I remember yes, right when they threw the flag, I was I like, they got him. Way, this kind of stuff that happens, I mean, it should go into review that you should challenge it. I know we don't have that now, but because it goes bang, bang, bang in front of home crowd, they're going to throw the flag. I hear you, and There's Bob. no way to look at it again. Yeah, I know. I hear you. I am frustrated just like Bob. Calls don't always go your way. But sometimes you don't help yourself. And like I said, I didn't think Buffalo helped themselves all that much. You think, oh, with a minute 38, they're just going to get, you know, 50, 60 yards and kick a chip shot field goal. They struggled. They got bailed out by a couple of penalties, by their own sportsmanlike conduct. But once again, they're Buffalo and we're Miami. Haven't won there since 2016 up in Buffalo. And that's going to continue for yet another year. 305-567-0560, taking your calls. 560 WQAM, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Neil in California. Oh, Neil. Thank goodness you didn't make the trip this week. No. <laughs> no. And you know what? Like, I thought it was a valiant effort, but all I can come in with this time is that Chris Greer has to go. And and point being, Mac Hollins. I remember Mac Hollins being on the Dolphins, yes. and the guy was like 7-11. He's open all the time. Made that amazing catch against the Raiders. Uh, to put us in field goal range, that one, you know, miraculous play. And then we let that guy go away. I don't get it. He came goes back to, to bite Buffalo. us today. He, us. he came back to bite us today. And and you know what? Who makes the decision to, to, to let players go? Chris Greer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Matt Collins had a big day. Cam Smith was all over him. Plenty of penalties right there again for Cam Smith, although kind of tightened it up towards the end of the game. But, man, I just am bewildered at how – both teams play. I mean, it, am I wrong by saying this is the best game the Dolphins have played all season long? Ah, I mean, go to Buffalo and play them tight and lose on a 61-yard field goal. That's tough, but season's over. Okay, I want to ask you this, and I was talking about with this with Greeper, and I, I guess it, it's a moot point now, but I would have gone for two no matter what. I don't care. I would have gone for two. I would have uh, been like, enough's enough. Let's go. But I think there was too much time on the clock. There's only had been like 20 or 30 seconds left. They wouldn't have uh, kicked the extra point. But, uh, you know, right now I'm saying that just because I'm just – I'm upset. They would have still lost, by the way. Yeah, it's a, it's a bad loss, you know. We take it on the chin and, you know, we'll come back next year and hopefully we do something better. But, is the season I mean, done? This is the year. We sold out. We're done. We're done. We're done. Like, there's too many – like – we had to go to Green Bay. We got San Francisco coming. You know, two games against the Miracle Jets. Like, I don't know how many Hail Marys Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is going to throw on us. It's yeah. going to be. And we dug a hole. We dug ourselves so deep now. And this one just, it seemed like it was our, you know, do or die, go, you know, season ending. You know, season's either going to go on and up after this with the win or downward with a loss. We threw the kitchen sink at him. And once again, it was Buffalo versus Miami. Yep. Yep. Thank I, you so much. Get one of those, get one of those padded helmets and put it on tour for the rest of the season. He was he's very mobile. <laughs> for someone that's suffering that many concussions and is possibly one concussion away from ending his career, he was mobile today, running around that last touchdown pass. He was running yep. around. I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. A little scary times, man. But yeah, tough times at Great Dolphins fan today. Losing by a lot, not a last second, but five seconds left. Buffalo's kicker, Tyler Bass, 61 yards. Can't make an extra point, but he can make the big 61-yard kick with the game on the line. Mike McDaniel decides not to call timeout. Why would you want to ice the kicker from 61 yards away? Doesn't call timeout on the third down either. And that was a terrible third down play by Buffalo. Nonetheless, 305. Well, that's because you could carry over the timeout to the next game, right? Oh, yeah, oh. that's right. right. No. Maybe he thought he'd save it for overtime. Oh, hmm. that also doesn't work, Mr. McDaniel. 305-567-0560. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. Hey, how's it going? How you doing, man? Uh, I'm just uh, frustrated, like man. Last caller. I'm calling from South Carolina. As the last caller said, season's over. Josh Allen is our daddy. He's going to continue to beat us. Greer's got to go, and this regime has got to go. The season is over. If any Dolphin fans have to think of that they think the Dolphins are going to do anything, the season is over. Just play out the season. This regime has got to go. Greer has got to go tomorrow. Uh-huh. When is Ross going to realize that this ain't working? You he do doesn't bring- know how to draft. 
He doesn't know how to get uh, players. He lets good players go. This team, I've been a Dolphin fan since I can start started watching football. I've gone and seen Marino when I was living in Miami. I've seen Shula's years. This team's got to change somehow. Ross has got to do something. This team has got to change. You bring up somehow. a good point. You are deep in a hole at two and six. You've already lost two games to Buffalo. Even if you do miraculously, when I say win out, or win almost all the rest of your games, and if for some reason you make it into the playoffs, you're still going to have to face Buffalo in the playoffs, and you know you can't beat Buffalo. So what are we doing here? What are we doing here right now? It's 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 just I feel sorry for the Dolphin fans. I'm a true diehard Dolphin fan, but I've just canceled the season out completely. Oh, man. It is tough times right now if you are a Dolphins fan, especially that you just cannot beat the Bills. You outplayed them today. You had the better quarterback, the better team, the better rushing attack. It seemed like you were better in every aspect of the game except on the scoreboard. 305-567-0560. Is this my do-do duty right now? Oh, you know right, Dandy. Duty, break it down. What you got, man? Get it off your chest. Well, first of all, where you at? Oh, man, I'm not doing too good right now, bro. This last-second field goal business has to stop with the Dolphins. Where you at? Oh, that's unbelievable. It's same here, man. It's ridiculous. Like, we we looked like we were dominating for a good portion of the game, man. Now, let's just blow it up, dude. We're you ready? done. Is it time to blow it up? I mean, two and six, can't beat Buffalo. I think so. Like, I mean, what, what do we have to hold on to? We have. We have what two in for another what five five years and uh, two hundred million dollars plus. Like, I mean, what are we doing here? Like, if if we're if we're not if we're not looking to actually like what? Oh, yeah, we went out that right. That's not going to happen. And if we do, we're still like, not win the division. Like Buffalo, still there. like, there's no point. So yeah, at this point, kind of have to blow it up, and it's sucks to have to say that, but it's the truth. It sucks, man. I, I mean, I, I'm surprised I, I wasn't named Dan because I was born the year after Dan you know, was drafted. So, <laughs> I mean, we had nothing to look forward to until last year, and then last year blew up to the end. I mean, you beat Tennessee and you hold Pittsburgh at home in the playoffs, and then no chance. Your phone's breaking up right there. That's my dude, dude, duty right there. He's like most Dolphins fans. What's the point? What's the point? Man, Please. his phone's breaking up there. Like the Dolphins need to be done. <laughs> 305-567-0560. Back to the phone lines. 560 WQAM. What's your name? Where are you calling from? James, I'm calling from Fort Lauderdale. James, what you got? Jason, Jason. Oh, no Jason, worries, what no you worries. got, brother? It's all good. Listen, man, you know, I hear everybody's gripes. Um, I've been a long-time Dolphin fan since, since the 70s. And with this particular game, we know that penalties killed us, number one. If it, was, if, if it wasn't for the fact that Jordan Poirier got mm. that penalty or whatever at, towards the end of the game, mm. the Dolphins probably won this game. You, you see that everybody saw this game. And in and, and this game, the Dolphins came to play. Mm-hmm. Tua came to play. Now, I want to pile on the Dolphins as much as anybody else, but I want to try to give credit and just think about, you know, ever since Tua come, came back, the Dolphins have been playing, you know, a lot better even though they haven't gotten over the hump. And I know the trade deadline is right around the corner, and I know everybody wants to blow the team up. But if you blow it up, what do you get back? You know what I mean? You can trade guys and just have a wholesale sale yeah. uh, at the trade deadline, but what do you get back? I mean, because I can guarantee you, if Buffalo loses the next few games, and let's just say by some you know, some freak chance that the Dolphins get a wild card or get in the playoffs, it's going to be the same situation yeah. as game six, when the Miami Heat were playing the San Antonio Spurs and everybody left the, uh, mm-hmm. the, 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 the AAA. When they came back, everybody came back in and wanted to be a part of the organization. They wanted to be fans again. So, you know, I get the frustration, man. But if, had it not been for Tua getting injured, you know, the second game of the season, I just don't think we'd be in this situation right now. The Dolphins got a lot of great players, and and, and, and there's a lot of injuries that have hit this team, man. So uh, I'll sit back and listen, brother. You got to take care. And Jason brings up a good point. All the people that say, blow it up, blow it up. At what cost, though? 
what, trade Tua with that huge contract? And there's nobody out there that you possibly could get that's any better, that's proven. No one can get a draft. There's no guarantees that Cam Ward's going to be a great pro quarterback or any of the guys in college are going to be great quarterbacks. So that's off the table. Tyreek Hill, that's a huge contract. You see what wide receivers go for nowadays? You're lucky to get third, third round picks. So you want to trade Tyree Kill for a third or second round pick? That's nothing guaranteed. Jalen Waddle, blow him up. He didn't do anything until the last two minutes. Huge contract once again. Is there anybody out there that you can get that has a thousand yards every year that they played? He's not going to get it this year, but nonetheless, not that easy. Jalen Ramsey, big interception today, by the way. Blow it up. He's got a contract extension. What are you getting in return? You're not getting your value on return. So when you sit there and say, blow it up, in theory, it sounds like a good idea, but it's maybe not as logical or as advantageous as you might think it is. Yeah, but the main thing is, I don't see it as blowing up the roster. I see it more of blowing up the organization. You got to get what they need to do. Yeah, it's, they can't get a bunch of draft picks and this is right. Chris Greer picking these guys. I mean, so that's where the issue comes in is, is that, you know, the, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. That's <laughs> I, I, basically exactly what's going on i was going here. insane today because we were doing the same thing that we always do to buffalo well not always yeah. playing well and finding a way or they find a way to beat us and, and i keep thinking there's going to be a different there's going to be a different outcome and there never is as, as the caller just mentioned the two injury was huge but the bigger one was not having a, a capable backup quarterback on this roster when they made that move in the offseason to cut mike white and leave skyward as your backup quarterback that was the downfall of the team right there. Yeah. Also, the big problem is, and I don't understand this one, is, is that you have a specific offense with a specific roster here, and yet you don't bring in a backup quarterback that could play this game, mm -mm. which makes no sense in the world to me. That's why I blame Chris Greer and I blame Mike McDaniel for basically the roster composition and the schemes of this team, which makes no sense. Dolphins fan, am I crazy? I look at every week. Every week they get me. I really thought they were going to go in today and beat Buffalo, and it's going to turn the season around. And they, lo and behold, went out there and played their best game of the season, and lo and behold, Buffalo did what Buffalo does to the Miami Dolphins. I thought last week, two is back. We're going to get the Cardinals. Cardinals aren't that great. Last second, Cardinals kick a field goal. I thought the Colts, and we know Anthony Richardson. Okay, we could say it now. He's a bum. We knew he was a bum. We just didn't want to say anything about it. He's a bum. Thought, you know, we'll find a way, or maybe they'll try to stick in Joe Flacco and it'll be too late. Nope. They beat us. Patriots, we barely win. I thought we'd win that game. Titans, I thought we'd find a way to win. Mason Rudolph, congratulations. The Titans won their second game today against New England, another team that we beat. Seattle, okay, I kind of thought that was a loss. Thought we'd beat the Bills the second game of the year. I really did because... We built for this. This was the goal. This is the year. Second game of the season at home. Monday night football. They get me every week. And now you say, okay, next game. Monday night football, November 11th against the Rams. And I'm sitting here and I'm doing it again, Greeper. Look, we showed improvement the past two weeks on offense. We got a running game. Two is getting more comfortable. Tyreek Hill's getting the ball more. We'll go in there and beat the Rams. Then the next week, the Raiders. Look, the Raiders are terrible. They got skull drugged by the Bengals today. That's a two-game winning streak. The Patriots, we can beat the Patriots. We've already beaten them. That's a three-game win streak. The Packers on Thanksgiving night. Happy Thanksgiving. The Jets, the Jets are going to jet. We'll beat the Jets, the Texans. We saw the Texans get killed by the Jets. The 49ers, by December 22nd, the 49ers are going to be pretty good. The Browns, they came back down to earth today. And they got beat. And you get the Jets the last game of the season, which possibly could be a winner go home game. I'm doing it again. Yeah, but nine nine wins isn't even going to be good enough at this point. I'm doing it again. I mean, I love the happy horse manure, but you know, the problem is, is unfortunately, remember, you have the same guy calling the plays. You have the same coaches coaching this team up right now, the same ones that didn't call a timeout, the same ones that have Chop Robinson. Jumping off sides with uh, Josh Allen there. The same one having uh, Jordan Poyer headhunting. I, although I do like the move uh, today, if you noticed, not having David Wong out there was an improvement. At least that's the way I look at it. I don't care what they want to say about injury and everything in that effect. He was hurting you out there on that field yeah. the previous couple of games. So. I'm going to very excited later on. We are going to hear from Mike McDaniel and I'm guessing one of the questions will be, why didn't you feel 
the need to call that timeout and ice the kicker in one way, shape, or form. What were you thinking? Oh, and by the way, the last play of the game, in case, you know, I'm getting too excited ahead of myself, they ran a flea flicker type, like, hell, not even a Hail Mary. We see the Hail Mary sometimes works. Heaven forbid Jaden Daniels, a rookie, can come in and do it. No, I know we did have a long way to go. Don't get me wrong. We had 70 yards to go, but they throw a four yard out and then they toss it back to Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle runs back about 20 yards and then gets tackled. That's the most creative offensive mind we got right there. I don't even think that's a drawn up play. That's just throw it out there. I don't know. 